What's up guys, Justin here with the CG Essentials. So the list of cool things that are built on top of geometry nodes just keeps getting bigger. This week we've got a geometry node setup that not only generates buildings, it also creates whole villages. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Village Inn is a brand new geometry node village creator from Alan Wyatt. I will link to this in the notes down below. I will note this is a paid geometry node setup. Um, it looks like he's looking for $6 or um, whatever you think your fair price is on that. So um, there is a little bit of a cost to that. I mean, honestly, $8 isn't that much for something that actually generates like actual villages, but um, there is a cost associated with that just to be upfront with that. But basically what this is, is this is a tool that comes with three different products. It comes with a village village generator, it comes with a building generator, and it comes with a castle generator. And I'm actually kind of excited to see uh, more add-ons kind of built on top of this. Uh, this is something I've seen more in like the Unity space and that kind of thing, the Unreal Engine space, where um, the buildings are generated procedurally using these grids, right? And you can kind of see that just by clicking on the buildings that are created in here. It's using different parts and pieces to procedurally create buildings. Well, what that does, right, and it's a little slow because there's a lot of stuff going on, but I'm just gonna adjust the seed of this. What it does is it procedurally generates the buildings and then it also procedurally places them along a curve. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the example file. So I'm gonna tab in here, I'm gonna adjust this curve and let's go ahead and let's get rid of a little bit of it. So we're gonna get rid of this, we're gonna get rid of this. So we're gonna dissolve or delete the vertices. And so notice how when we do this, what this does is this adjusts so that the city is generated based on this curve. So let's say that we were to come in here and we were to adjust one of the points of the curve. So let's move it over. So like this right here, notice how the city that's being generated is also adjusting with this. So it's uh, randomly placing buildings and trees and other things along the curve that we generate. And it's probably a little bit faster if we just jump over into a uh, solid mode right here. But let's say that we were to make an adjustment here. So we're gonna rotate this and then move these over like this. Notice how that curve is um, actually driving where those buildings are generated. And so let's say we were to come in here and we were to draw a curve with the draw tool right here. I'm gonna set this to surface so this is aligned with the surface, but let's say I was to draw an additional curve inside of this curve. What this is gonna do is this is actually gonna generate buildings along that curve as well. And so this has a lot of really interesting possibilities in it. I mean, first off, just for like the procedural generation of buildings, um, this is a really cool idea. Um, and I think it's a pretty good implementation of this. Notice how you can also adjust things like the density. So let's say I was to bring the density up, right? So to like two or to three, the number of buildings I have in here is going to adjust. You can also adjust things like the width of the road. So you can make it narrower, you can make it wider, other things like that from the modifier settings right here. Now, another thing that you can do is you can also go into the geometry node setup. So if you jump over into the geometry node setup over here, and uh, we're gonna zoom out a little bit just so we can kind of see what's going on here. Um, but let's say with this geometry node setup that you came in here and you adjusted this. So there's information in here about the buildings that are being generated inside of the nodes, right? So for example, on my building right here, I can set my minimum and maximum heights in here um, in order to set the randomization. So if I adjust my heights, for example, notice how it's randomly placing those building heights in here. So it's adding those extra floors procedurally, just using all the parts and pieces that are in here. So you can see all the building pieces over here. Um, you can toggle those on if you want to. Um, they're kind of off to the side, but basically they're just like modular pieces that are in here. And notice how they're all created on kind of a grid, meaning they're all the same size, but this is using this to add the walls, the corners, other things like that. So you can add your own pieces as well, which we're not gonna talk about in this particular video, but that is an option. If you want your buildings to be wider, right? So like for example, if you want some of these buildings to have more um, grid pieces on the X and Y axes, you can adjust this in order to do that as well. So um, you can really use this to kind of set the style of the uh, village that you can create using these settings. And then you could also add or remove pieces from these different collections in here in order to add your own. But let's take a look at the other two things that also come along with this. So this also comes with a single building generator. 
All right, so in the building generator, you open it up, you get this sweet default cube. Um, so pretty cool. No, um, there's there's more to it than that. So um, if you click in here, when you first open this up, this is basically, this comes in with the, uh, the modifier and viewport turned off. So if you click on this and toggle it, um, you can turn this on. But basically what this does is this generates buildings procedurally inside of Blender. And so basically what this does is you can actually tab into edit mode right here and you need to toggle this off in order to do this which is why um, it looks this way but you can go into edit mode and you can do things like extruding out like this so when you do that when you extrude that additional face notice how that's actually adjusting the building that's created in here so if i extrude this even further um, it's going to add more things to my building and so let's say we wanted to create another one of these buildings we could do a shift a and we could add a cube right i'm going to move this over and in this case i'm just going to add that geometry nodes modifier and we'll just apply and what we're going to do is we're going to use the village in building generator in here and apply it to this and you want to make sure that you set your ground target so in this case we just want to set this to ground plane and so you can use this in order to generate really whatever kind of building you want from a size standpoint it's a little bit odd in the sense that if i tab into edit mode and i adjust this cube right so if i extrude this shape out this way notice how i don't get an l-shaped building i get a building that's bigger that may just be something that i have set up wrong but it is a little bit odd to me so same thing um it's it i think it's driven by the box width and height but i'm not a hundred percent sure so, and then one other thing you can do with this is if you don't want to tab into edit mode and make those adjustments, you can just scale this up and down and then do an apply rotation and scale in here. And notice how that building is going to adjust based on that. So you can use this to set your, set your building to be wider and apply your rotation and scale. But again, even, even then, notice how I scaled it this way, but the building got bigger this way. So um, that one's a little bit odd to me. Um, it's definitely workable, but it's just kind of an interesting thing about the way the building comes together. So one other thing to realize about this is if I take this object and I do an apply, right, we're just going to lose the object. It doesn't actually create anything in here. So that's a geometry nodes thing. And probably what, and so to get around that, what you can do if you just want to like finalize this building, right, and just call it done so that it's not sitting in the background doing all those adjustments or anything like that. Um, what you can do is you can come in here and add a node at the very end under join geometry between that and the group output you can do a shift a and add a realize instances in here now i'm not 100 percent sure this does seem like it makes everything slower so you want to be a little bit careful with it but once you add a realize instances in here then if i have this building right and notice how it's a lot slower so i wouldn't add that until you really need to but then you can apply this modifier and it actually generates this as geometry and so then i might do a shift a to add a new cube so if i wanted another building in here um, i might add the geometry nodes to it again and use the uh, village building generator right here but then i might go back into that geometry nodes and remove that right so i wouldn't plug that in until i need it but if you do need to like actually generate this building um, and not have it be live anymore then um, you can do that with that realize instances node and then finally let's take a look at the castle generator and so the castle generator is a tool that comes with this that randomly generates castles so notice how i can use this in order to randomly generate a castle based on a point that we have in here and so if i toggle this off you can see how this is basically just a big plane that's in here but if you want to make adjustments or change the um, attributes associated with this you want to jump over into the geometry nodes settings so let's zoom in a little bit maybe give us more of an upward angle but again this is going to be very similar to what we talked about with the actual building itself right so you can adjust like the random the randomization of the heights in here so you can set minimum maximum heights of these pieces um, you may want to be a little bit careful because this starts looking like a medieval ski resort um, so be a little bit careful with that but, but you can use this in order to do that randomization in here. So all the different parts and pieces are adjustable. So things like your different like castle turrets and other things like that, you can use this in order to adjust those. You can also set um, if there's like a width associated with those, um, you may not want to do that, but it kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. But if you do add a width to those, um, then you get some kind of like house pieces that are in here as well. So really interesting application in here. You can use this to generate your own 
castle um, just by adjusting that scene. So now if you go into the geometry node settings on this, so you go into the, or into the modifier right here, notice how this is going to randomize this based on whatever you select. You do want to be a little bit careful. Again, like I said, um, you may want to keep these on one, but there are some interesting possibilities associated with this. And so I think I would make the same note on this one about the realized instances if you did want to generate a castle and then just turn it to geometry so it's not geometry nodes anymore. If you're like exporting to a game engine or something like that, you would just dump that in here and apply it. But then I would unhook it for things that you create in the future um, because it does make things run a lot slower. So again, really exciting things going on with geometry nodes right now. The grid system that people are using is kind of a game changer, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about these generations? Uh, geometry node setups. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.